Uh, hello, Mr. Vendetta on Town Board again. Hello, Mr. Robert. Robert. Again, Robert Brett, I think you guys know me. Um, I guess if it's okay, we'll, we'll just continue with the prescribed questions and, and then statements. Is that all right? Yes, I'm going to be okay. moving you along, so let's. Okay, yes, I'm sure. Get yeah, ready. Sounds good. <laughs> um, I brought to your attention a couple of times before we get, I, I just want to again <laughs> reiterate that I really feel that. Um, Actually, this is a page from the town's uh, website. It's it's in, re in, re excuse me, in relation to the town clerk. And what it reads is, it says, the town clerk must attend meetings of the town board, act as the clerk thereof, and keep a complete and accurate record of the proceedings of each meeting and public hearing. And again, I, I just from my own personal opinion, I don't believe that handwritten notes that are being taken are complete, accurate records. And I would like to see um, the meeting actually uh, recorded. Okay, this is a question. This is an issue that you've raised before. Right. Uh, I told you we'd look into it and we'd look into it. Thank you, John. Um, I think what I said is we'll take it under advisement. Yeah. I just wanted to, uh, I had asked a previous question in regards to SRB, uh, the SIM uh, contracts, and I know that you just answered some questions from uh, Robert Fryer. And um, I, I was actually. Do you, know Bob? Do you know Bob, by the way? No, not really, no. Uh, just to say hello to, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I'm curious, before I begin, I noticed that you're using the term license today, but I'm going to be speaking about like the contract agreement. I don't know, is there a difference? Is this, do you consider it the same thing? No, I don't actually. Different, different legal ramifications. Flow. That's what I thought. So I, I, I'm, not, I'm not addressing any licenses today. I, um, actually, these are some questions that I asked earlier that Mr. Fryer asked, and um, I know you took a long time and you, you explained like you did today that there were no ramifications, but uh, I have some, and you also explained that if the town was was to terminate the contract and did have to uh, pay a termination uh, amount, it would be substantially less than the capital improvements made at the golf course. But I have some documents and actually I have something to share with you. I want to share some of our esteemed members of the press today. And copies for the town. I'm sure you probably have seen most of these already. It sounds from uh, Councilman Alicia just made a mention. It sounds like she's uh, wearing the stuff. And the first, the first piece that I wanted to address is an amendment to the concession agreement that actually this appears that it was it appears that you, Mr. Supervisor, signed it on June 8th of 2010. It was also signed by Harinder Singh, and those those uh, signatures were notarized. It looks like yours was notarized by a Louis a Louis uh, Tripodeau, and Mr. Singh's by Patricia Patricia Barnello. And I, I believe Patricia Barnello, I believe, is the, your treasurer of your North Massapequa uh, Republican Club, and I think she's on the Zoning Board of Appeals here. But I'd like to ask. No, she's not on the Zoning Board of Appeals, and she's not the treasurer of the North Massapequa. Oh, thank you. Thank you for clarifying that to me. Excuse me, can I have a second? That's for all. I'm sorry, it's the same thing, but we just have my other pockets. What I'd like to bring your attention to in this contract is this is an amendment to, to one of your earlier contracts. And on the first page, you could take note that the town here is explaining that SRB Corporation has completed capital improvements in the amount of $1,700,000. $1,782,662. And then, excuse me. On page two, it lists the amendments to the contract. And if you take a minute and look at the second amendment, paragraph two there, I don't think it makes sense to talk about what was going to happen prior to April 30, 2015, because obviously we're after that date. So I'd just like to to discuss this. What this contract amendment says is that after April 30th, 2015, if the town terminates this agreement for any reason other than a default of the concessionaire, which would be SRB, the town shall pay to the concessionaire a sum equal to 5% of the capital improvements made to the facility by the concessionaire for each year or part of a year remaining in the initial term of this agreement, including any remaining renewal options up to 100% of the value of said improvements. Now, I also have, 
I have this stuff in chronological order, but I'm just going to jump ahead of myself. I also have another document that's prepared by the Office of the Town Attorney. This was uh, prepared on April 6 of 2011. I'll share it with you in a second. But what this says is, in connection with the above reference matter, the Town of Voice Debate hereby certifies that SRB has completed and the Town has accepted capital improvements to the golf course facility in the amount, in the amount of $4,950,000. These funds may be considered as fully vested for the purposes of payment to SRB and or Madison Bank, as the case may be in accordance with the proposed assignment agreements in the event of default or other termination of the concession agreement between the town and SRB. So I'm a little confused that you signed this document and, and in the last couple of meetings you didn't know anything about it, there was no there was no termination penalty, not penalty, I don't want to use the word penalty, but no agreement of what would be paid if, if there was termination. And now, from what I can read of this, I'm, you know, I'm just, I only have a high school education, so I'm not that sharp. But from what I may get out of this, it looks like if you were to terminate, you would either have to pay SING or SLB 5% of, I guess, $5 million till the end of the contract, 2070, or um, the, the completed amount of capital improvements, which would be almost $5 million. So th is the town, if you were to terminate, you will look, uh, is the town looking at possible payment of $5 million to SLB? See, I, I don't think I can do any better than give you the answer I gave earlier. I'm going to stand by the same answer because we're going over the same ground again. I'm going to stand by the answer that I gave to Mark Ryan. Okay. Uh, I just want to move on. To, um, yeah, please, please, Rob. Look, we've got, I, 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 listen, no, don't take it the wrong way. I don't mean to be difficult. But we really are meeting after meeting. We're going over the same ground over and over again. Uh, let, let's, let's move on. Let's leave I, it. I don't think I've ever brought this to your attention, these figures, these documents. As a matter of fact, I'm, oh, you, oh, you I'm disturbed that, that you, 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 you specifically said right? that there were no terminations. You, could walk, you just said it again. You could walk away at any time. No terminations, no worries. This looks like a big worry to me. But I'll, I'll move on. Well, well I'll move on to that. But that isn't what we said. You see, that's the difficult. But I, you know what? That's. I'm just going to be clear on this. That is not what we said. Please continue. Move on to that. Thank you. Uh, the next document I'd like to have to share with you is this is produced by the Office of the Town Attorney on June 17th, 2010. It's a letter to Mas uh, Madison National Bank. It's in reference to a one million five hundred thousand dollar line of credit. The lender being Madison National Bank and the borrower being SRB Concessions Incorporated. Let's give you a copy of that if you like. And this, this letter was produced by town attorney, uh, actually it's signed by Frederick May. And the first par paragraph explains that I have acted as counsel to the town of Oyster Bay in connection with the line of credit made by Madison National Bank to the SRB Concession Incorporated in a principal amount of $1,500,000. And so acting, I have reviewed the agreement between the town and SLB concession, concession dated April 19, 2005, and the amendments and agreements between the town and SLB concession, concession dated September 16, 2008, June 9, 2010, and the default assignment and concession agreement records between SLB Incorporated and Madison National Bank, and agreed to and accepted by the town dated June 18, 2010. And I'd just like to bring your attention to this default assignment of concession agreements, which was dated June 8, 2010, and this has been signed by Town Attorney Leonard Genova. Now, this document reads, the assigner, that's SLB concessions, hereby, claim, hereby assigns to the assignee, that's Madison National Bank, all payments and any other sums of money which are due, claim to be due, or will become due any, any due under by reason or if arising out of the concession agreement, including without limitation payments which are payable to the signer, that's SRB concession, under the pursuant to paragraph 32 of the concession agreement, which I just read to you. This assignment is made as collateral security for a certain $1,500,000 line of credit, the line of credit made available by the assignee, that's National, Madison National, to the assigner. And this is what I, what I find interesting. If there is an event of default on the line of credit, which default remains uncured be, beyond the expiration of any applicable notice of the cure period, then a signer agrees that a signee in his interest may appear, as its interest may appear, may serve a notice of default upon Tobey. After service of a default notice upon Tobey, 
the assignee shall be entitled to, with respect to the concession agreement, to receive and collect all, any and all monies due, claimed to be due, and to become due as aforesaid, and to give all releases required to be given thereof, and the assignee does hereby appoint the assignee true and lawful attorney irrevocably before it, and in its name instead for the assignee's own benefit to task, demand, collect, receive, and sue for the monies due, as here and after more specifically set forth, or to become due as aforesaid, and to do any and all acts and things necessary and proper in connection therewith, with the same force and effect of the assignment I could have done, said this assignment had not been made, hereby ratifying and confirming all that said absence may lawfully, uh, by lawfully, by virtue thereof. Now, my question is, does this mean that the town guaranteed a one and a half million dollar loan for SRB concession? And, and I asked you in the last meeting, um, I asked you questions regarding the termination of the agreement and the default, and when I, when I, you answered my question to the termination, but when I asked you about the default, you said I already answered it. But, I mean, you know, you're an attorney, you're a smart guy, there's a difference between termination and default. So if, if Mr. Singh defaults, which means that he loses his lawsuit and he's going out of business, is the town going to have to pay for this loan? Look, uh, uh, Rob, I'm going to stand by the answer. Again, we've gone over this ground several times. I'm going to stand by the answer I gave Bob Fryer, uh, but we will take we'll take under advisement what he submitted to us this morning. I'll have the attorneys go through it. And Thank you. I guess give me their opinion. There's, there's just one last piece of information I'd like to bring to your agreement, uh, bring to your attention in regards to the contracts. I know that when questioned about the extensions of the contracts, you explained that the town had no no reason to believe that there are any financial difficulties with with Mr. Singh and with SRB, and it's part of the reason that you decided to, uh, part of the reason that you gave that you decided to extend the contracts to 2070. But I also have a subordination agreement. You can have a copy if you like. And uh, this is, this is between Sovereign Bank and Mr. Singh. And what I really find interesting about this. Bob, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. I'm sorry, this uh, is within Sovereign Bank, Mr. Harinder Singh and the Madison National. Actually, it appears to be like a consolidation, consolidation of loans where Mr. Singh is now looking for like a $12 million loan. But what I found remarkable is that these documents, which I believe were supplied to the town, explain that Harinder Singh is using his life insurance policy as collateral in this loan. That is the act of a desperate individual. If this, if this information was known to the town prior to extending the contracts, I, I just don't understand why, why we, the town would be getting involved with someone that's in such dire straits in business. I'm just going to uh, go to some other questions. I asked you last week, John, um, you explained to me that your friend Rich Paselli, uh, he re receives payment through the mass, uh, excuse me, to the friends of John Vendetto, that you store your, your campaign material in his Ron Conkema address, and I had mentioned that he was getting that payment from March of 2013 on. Um, what I'm a little confused about is, it seems that Rich Paselli was also being paid $1,000 a month from the friends of John Vendetto, for storage prior to this, but at an address of 273 North Rutherford Street in Massapequa. So I'd like to know if, if you were storing your stuff there and then you moved it to Ron Conklin. Oh, and then prior to that, I noticed that Rich Baselli was being paid $1,000 a month as a consultant by the Friends of John Vendetta. So my question is, how long has Rich Baselli been receiving $1,000 a month from the Friends of John Vendetta? I, I, okay. I had a previous question I asked you, the Friends of John Vendetta you, you lease a vehicle, I believe it's a Toyota, I'd ask you who drives it. I was wondering if you could tell me where you, keep, where you store it and what, what purpose the friend's John Medetto has this, this vehicle for. I'll, I'll get a real thorough rundown of it for you, but it's generally a vehicle that's leased by the campaign, typically for campaign purposes. I've driven it, Mr. Porcelli has driven it. Uh, other, other campaign workers have driven it. Uh, it's not really stored anywhere. Um, I, I think Mr. Porcelli, uh, pretty much takes care of the car, so to speak, if that's the, the way you talk about a car. Okay. So, so it, it might actually be stored at his address in our Kakamura? I don't know that it's, when you say stored, it contemplates that you let it, 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 
he used it to go. Uh, he uses it primarily. Mr. Porcelli uses it. I think he probably used it the most. Yeah. Okay. So that, well, that kind of answers my question. Who operates a Toyota? Well, okay. Mr. That, Porcelli. I would say. I would say he drives a lot. Okay. No problem. I had asked at the last meeting, John. You know, I, I tried desperately to get some some uh, some of my complaints forwarded to the uh, ethics board, and you hired the special the special counsel. And I'm curious. I asked you in the last meeting, uh, are they doing anything? Did Commissioner Polito respond to the? I know, he, according to the, the ethics code, he had a couple of weeks to respond to the allegations I made. Is anything happening with that? Or? I don't really know. The board of ethics operates autonomously. I. I I don't ask them for updates. I don't know that they would give us any, uh, to be quite honest with you. Is anybody aware of the... Uh, of was the that, that, I, can only, I think we should only say this at this point. The matter is pending before the Board of Ethics. I, I, that would be, I'm sure you can understand my curiosity. It's, it's no, been a number of months since I contacted them. No, I, I haven't heard anything. anything. But, but I can <laughs> tell you that the matter is pending before the Board of Ethics and is being handled by the Board of Ethics. Okay, thank you. Um, Another previous question I had with you was in regards to the resolution 328-215. I'd ask you um, who the special counsel for federal litigation was and, and what exactly are they doing? Any information? Yeah, the names of the counsel are set forth in the resolution. It's five different law firms. And they have not yet been retained for any specific action. They were, this resolution was uh, adopted so that in the event that uh, federal civil rights litigation was brought against the town, we'd be in a position to have defense counsel. Okay. Um, it's a little difficult for me to obtain any information through the Freedom of Information Act. Would I be able to copy of that resolution after the meeting, maybe? Yeah, right now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thanks. thanks. Just give me an alcohol. Well, I mean, I, uh, Rob, I can mean, Bob, 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 I'm going to have to ask you to really pick it up a little bit. Rob, yes, sir. Pick it up a little bit, because we need to Oh, yes, yes, yes. I'm not going over. Okay, I asked you at the last meeting, um, the Stromolios that I mentioned that were, uh, that were involved in, in, in this apparent uh, possible bribery implication back in the 80s. Um, I noticed that a number of Stromolios both worked for the town and their address had come back. And you had explained to me that your treasurer was at that address. Is Mrs. or Mr. and Mrs. Stromolio your, your treasurer for the Friends of North? No, but, you know, you're hurting my ears. I mean, what you're doing to the name of this family is just incredible. No, I don't even mean mispronouncing it. That, that's the least of the problems. But you're mentioning the scrammy yellow is the, is the pronunciation. Uh, I apologize. I don't I don't apologize for the information I'm bringing out. I apologize for the mispronunciation. I know. That's the unfortunate part of this dialogue. I, I have a problem you mispronouncing your name. Of course not. But, I mean... I don't really know. I, I have to be candid as I can with you, Rob. I really don't know what you're talking about when you talk about Stramiello's and bribery and Stramiello being involved in my campaign. Last time you made a statement that some Stramiello was getting $107,000 a year from the town of Oyster Bay. Uh, I mean, these, these statements are. are, are I don't want to say they're being made with knowing falsity because I don't believe that about you. But I mean, they are being made with a reckless disregard for what the truth is. I mean, Stramiello, no Stramiello, no person named Stramiello is involved in my campaign. So I don't know where that's coming from or why you're saying that. Uh, but there is no Stramiello involved in my campaign. And I'm not aware of any Stramiello involved in bribery. I'm not aware of any Stramiello who's making $107,000 a year uh, currently in the town of Oyster Bay. Uh, I just really don't know what else to say. Well, um, I'd just like to say that the address 290 North Queens, to the best of my determination, is owned by Mr. Peter Stramolio. Or Stramello, I'm sorry. I don't mean to pronounce it wrong. So, I, um, let me finish now. I didn't interrupt you. Let me finish. When I questioned you about it at the last meeting, you told me that your treasurer was at that address. So I'm just right. curious. Is, is your treasurer Mr. Molio? Oh, my goodness. Um, I'll say it one more time. There was no one named Stramiello involved in my campaign. Okay. I, I don't know how else to say it to you. And I'd just like to say that the reason that I said that Peter M. Stramolio 
who at one time, at least up to 212, worked as a recycle supervisor, had a salary of $163,000 to, uh, excuse me, 163, $285.78. And with overtime, we made $168, $308.53. So that's where I came up with the $170,000. Okay, but I, I was telling you, I, I, I don't really know. I don't have any documentation in front of me to confirm it. But you said more than that. You used his name and bribery in the same sentence. You were making you were drawing conclusions upon wrong facts that because he lives at a certain address, he must be involved in Benedetto's campaign. That is not so. I mean, I, you know, Rob, we, we go through this at every meeting. And I, I, I guess reckless disregard for the truth is the only thing I can say. You're, you're, you simply are not doing your homework. You have your facts wrong. You're jumping to conclusions which apparently excite you or which you would like to be so, but they're not so. Okay, well, I'm asking you, that's how I'm finding out. Yeah, I mean, but you, you know, it's if like you're saying you know, no, that no, just, that. Let me finish, let me finish. Okay. It's like the old, the old, what is the old uh, joke in law school uh, about leading? I didn't go to law school. How many times, no, I didn't say you did go to law school, I'm looking at the lawyers. Now, how many times a week did you, did you know, beat your wife or throw your grandmother down the stairs and you know, you see you're going, but I never did that, you know. Uh, you really have to be careful the questions uh, really are damaging to reputation, um, they're hurtful, uh, and if, by the way, if they were true, I would have absolutely no problem. But, but when they're not true, and you say, well, supervisor, aren't you aware that you know, Joe Muscarella was convicted of you know, whatever, X, uh, in such and such a year, and I say, no, Rob, that's not true. But the word has been disseminated, whether you're doing it on the internet, whether you're doing it in this room, on the public record, with media present, uh, it's, it's very hurtful, and I, I would just ask you to be more decent uh, about these allegations and make sure that they're so uh, b before you put them forth. Okay, I'll take that on the revisement. Um, I have some new questions now, if that's okay. We really, I really got to... Well, really I, I have some stuff that I think is important. Well, I know you're in a big rush I, to leave now, Believe but it or not, I'm not, no, no, believe it or not, I have other things to do that are important to So I'm going to ask you to start to wrap up. Okay, fine. Okay? I asked you a few meetings back in relation to Resolution 287-215 who that contract was awarded to. I believe you told me it was Watercraft Irrigation. I don't, I don't expect you to know it now, but I was wondering if you could find out for me. No, I really don't, Bob. I don't uh, no, 287-215. Okay, we'll check it out. Okay, I'd like to know um, if Frederick Ippolito is the Acting Commissioner of Planning and Development, why he no longer attends the town meetings. I just, I, I mean, I, I, within the past well, hour, I just confirmed so you, you didn't say why he doesn't attend the meetings. No, I just no, want to know no, why he's no. not coming. He said I would like to. Oh, he's, I thought you said you'd like to know if. No, no, yeah. I just want to know why he doesn't come. I accept yeah. he's the. I don't have a problem with the commission. Okay. This is very important, so please don't rush out for that. For this. In relation to the evidence of misconduct or possible criminal behavior that the town is currently negotiating to have destroyed or to obtain from former Bay Constable Christopher Briggs, supervisor. After your repeated statements to me acknowledging that the town would have a legal obligation to forward any knowledge or evidence that may substantiate misconduct or criminal behavior in relation to a town employee to the appropriate authorities, in this case, I would assume the Nassau County District Attorney, I ask you, do you intend to forward this evidence to the District Attorney, or do you intend to destroy it or somehow depress, suppress it? No, I think, we, I think we've already determined that. What's that? I believe they already have it. Well, we have what? I don't say there's a video. But, but, but here you go again. See, here we go again. This, everything you're saying is based upon the fact that I think it's the plaintiff in the federal lawsuit actually has uh, inculpatory evidence. Um, to date, notwithstanding repeated demands, therefore, I don't believe we've, we've gotten some evidence which ultimately someone will have to determine whether or not it's inculpatory. It certainly doesn't appear to be inculpatory in any matter whatsoever, and hopefully the, the plaintiff in that case was not misleading the court in documents submitted that said, said that he had such evidence, but well, that all remains to be seen. We're still waiting to get this uh, quote unquote inculpatory evidence, and uh, we will submit it to the district attorney. I think we've, I think we've made that very clear. So you'll submit it? No, no, don't, don't, don't. I'm sorry, I thought you were done. I, I believe we've agreed we're going to submit it to the DA. The DA has it as well. 
Well, I don't, I don't. Okay, I, I just, you know. Um, and the reason we're doing it is because we have, what I believe, and I learned it in my days as town attorney, we have an absolute obligation to do that. I'm very glad to hear that. Um, I'd like to ask you how. I'm glad I made you play. Thank you. Come on, Rob. Let's go. Okay, here we go. Ready? These are quick ones. No. You got you got to really go. Come on. <laughs> Salem. Let's get a lunch. Sure. Gotta go back to the clubhouse. I'd like to know, Mr. Supervisor, how long. You know, I don't know why. Uh, I really, I actually don't really appreciate the fact that my town attorney is doing this, but he's trying to be helpful. According, oh, to, our see, records, see, according see. to our records, Peter, a Peter Stramiolo retired in 2012 uh, at, at a salary of $95,000. So, uh, you know, you guys want to compare. I really don't have time for this. That's great. If you okay. guys want to compare. Well, I'm sorry. I want to get going, but... but I, no, we're going we're to end it now, Rob. You saved these for the... You're ending, you're ending it now? How about my statement? Can I make that? Okay, go ahead. Thanks a lot, John. Mm. Wow. I did not begin my interaction with certain employees of the towns and all of a sudden. Let me, let me stop. How long is this? Five, not less than five minutes, two minutes. No, 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 no. you got to get it down to under. Well, why is that? Yeah. Why is that? What is this all about? You don't want to hear what I have to say, so you're cutting me off. We have a lot of work. John, John, I left the meeting last week, and before I could get home, you were already in your office at 283 North Broadway. Where are you going? It's not 283. It's 838. 838. Yeah. Well, that's I don't want to argue with you up here. You're, you're we're not, on my we're not arguing. Uh, you got one more minute. Wrap it up. That sounds like a time restraint. Constraint. It is right now because I have time constraints in place. I think you're afraid to hear what I have to say. Well, I'll tell you that right now. Then give me two minutes. Then I've, I've listened. Then give me two minutes, minutes and you're not afraid to hear. For, for thirty hours. I did not begin my interaction with certain employees and officers of the town of Oyster Bay in a belligerent manner. If anything, it was the other way around. I believe I've repeatedly substantiated demonstrations of a lack of proper training, disdain for the public, misconduct, and outright malfeasance displayed by town employees and officials during my endeavors with the town. I have done my best to bring this to your attention. In doing so, I have been ignored, lied to, accused of committing felony crimes without any substantiating proof, rebuffed for making false allegations in regards to town officers' building files, denied public information which should be readily available and provided via our FOIL laws, and FOIL laws and told over and over again by you, Mr. Vendetto, that I'm wrong. You have accused me of intending to harm or embarrass individuals employed by, employed by the town and those appointed to public positions. I don't know why your friends, family, and neighbors would be following my Facebook or YouTube pages as you claim, Mr. Vendetto, but I guess it's possible. Please be assured it is not my intention to embarrass or harm anyone. The truth is, it's the information I have brought to your attention that is embarrassing to those involved. Recently, I have reviewed the financial disclosure forms on file with the New York State Board of, Ed of Elections by the Town of Voice Bay politicians required to file such. Some of you, in my opinion, knowingly refused to properly register until I brought this information to your attention. I also referenced the employment status in the town with the names of donators to your clubs and committees. What I found is a disgusting display of nepotism that one would have to see to believe. Offices of the town zoning board, historical preservation committee, and planning board serve as offices in your political clubs. The same people make substantial donations to those clubs and committees. Some of the people run businesses that have contracts with the town involving millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Most of them are employed along with many of their family members by the town. Barnello, Stromello, Spinelli, Antitomaso, Altadonna, Porcelli. It's like one big inner club all enjoying the good life at the expense of hardworking taxpayers. I find it remarkable that the majority of town employees who contribute all seem to make the exact same monetary contribution. In my opinion, it's as if they were almost told what was acceptable or required. I find it incredible that the architect and builders involved in the Made Made End fiasco are regular donators of thousands of dollars to your political clubs. Commission on Planning and Development in Bledo, who we all know has been accused of tax evasion in connection with his employment with the list of business, which is a known contract with the town, even donated $10,000 in a single donation to the friends of John Vendetto. Mr. Ved Mr. Vendetto, I don't think accepting that donation a single, excuse me, I don't think accepting that donation was ethically appropriate. It makes me feel that it could influence you in your decisions regarding my allegations against the commissioner. I think I know now why you refused to forward my complete complaints on Commissioner Ibledo and the other town officials to the district attorney. In fact, you purposely removed the section of my complaint which informed you of the commissioner's use of the town attorneys in his own personal tax case. 
I personally heard Frank Scarella say he never saw a dime in payment for his work on, on that tax case by, Frank, by uh, representing Fred Belito. In my opinion, this is just another example of the total disregard of any resemblance for ethical behavior conducted in a town voice debate. I want to thank you for your attention to my questions. As long as I like to continue to discover issues that I feel need to be brought to your attention, I will. And in closing, I'd like to share my opinion that governance makes for good politics. Thank you. Before you go away, I thought you were in a rush. What's that? I thought you were in a rush, John. Yeah. Yeah. Just for me to speak? Now you want to speak? <laughs> yes, that's problem. I don't know. Tell me. Before you go away, I just want to make it clear for the record, for I don't know how many times I've said it, the statement that you just read is replete, replete with inaccuracies uh, to the point where I think every conclusion that you attempt to draw upon those uh, uh, inaccuracies is totally and wholly wrong. I think that's part of the problem in the town of West Bay. What, what, what don't you feel about that? And I just want to be clear for the record. I'm, not I'm in a rush now. I got to go. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do it <laughs> line by line. But I just want the record to reflect that. I don't understand. I didn't get a chance to talk, and now you're going to speak, 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 speak. I just want to be clear for the record that every statement you the statement you just made is, is complete with inaccuracies, and is really just sort of, I guess, a repetition of all the things that you said before. And we'll leave it at that.